This video is sponsored by Merch, the perfect way to show off that you like cool math. I'm pretty sure you all know by now that Feynman's trick is my favorite way to integrate. And I've solved so many cool integrals here on the channel using that technique, but I've never applied it to a double integral. So that's what we're going to do today. We have the double integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x times log y divided by 1 minus x times y times log xy. Okay, cool. It's an interesting structure. And to solve it using Feynman's trick, I'm going to have to define some kind of integral function. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'd like to make some modifications to the integrand first. And this term is going to help me in that regard. Notice that for the region of integration we have here, the absolute value of x and the absolute value of y are both less than 1. This means that the absolute value of x times y is also less than 1, and this implies that we can expand the reciprocal of 1 minus x times y as a geometric series. So we can write this as the sum over the non-negative integers n of xy to the n. Okay, cool. So we can write the integral i as the double integral from 0 to 1 of x log x log y divided by log xy times the sum over n of xy to the n dx dy. And because all of this is independent of the index variable n, we can slip it inside the summation operator and write this as the double integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over n of x times xy to the n times log x log y divided by log xy dx dy. Next, we switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to get a sum of integrals. So we have the sum over n of the integrals from 0 to 1 of xy to the n times x times log x log y divided by log xy dx d y. Now I'm going to define the integral function based on this double integral here. So I'll define i of some parameter t as the double integral from 0 to 1 of xy to the t times x times log x log y divided by log xy dx dy. And the reason for introducing the parameter as an exponent is this logarithm term in the denominator. Once I'm rid of it, I have a pretty simple double integral to evaluate. And I'm interested in the integer values of this parameter. So that's the plan. We evaluate the integral function. We plug in t equals n and just plug it back into this summation expression. And then we evaluate the resulting infinite series. Okay, so now that we have a plan, we can differentiate with respect to the parameter and see what we get. Switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, we have the double integral from 0 to 1 of the partial derivative with respect to t of xy to the t times a bunch of stuff which is independent of the t parameter. So I can just write that as a constant in the t world and take it outside the differentiation operator. Okay, so far so good. And differentiating with respect to t for this thing here gives me the repeated function xy to the t times the logarithm of the constant base xy. And this log xy term cancels out quite nicely with the log xy term already in the denominator. So this implies that the derivative of i with respect to t equals the double integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x log y times xy to the t dx dy. Now let me just expand the exponent here and multiply out the terms. So I have the double integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t plus 1 times log x times y to the t times log y dx dy. So what we have here is a double integral where the integrand is a function purely of x times a function purely of y. 
So in this case, we can just treat it as a product of two ordinary integrals, one over x and the other over y. And it's very easy to see that if we just take all the y terms outside the first integration operator with respect to x. So that means we have the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the t log y dy times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t plus 1 log x dx. And I can evaluate both of these integrals using a very nice formula. That is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the m times log to the n of x dx equals negative 1 to the n times gamma n plus 1 divided by m plus 1 to the n plus 1. Link in the description below for a proof on my Instagram. So that means in both cases I have the logarithms raised to the first power. So I have negative 1 to the 1, which is negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is just positive 1. So that's what I have. I have 1 times gamma 2. Gamma 2 is 1 again. So I have 1 divided by m plus 1. m is whatever power you have for x or y. So that means I have t plus 1 to the n plus 1, which is again 2 times t plus 2, again, squared. So that's the derivative of i with respect to t completely in terms of the parameter t. And now I can recover the integral function by integrating with respect to the parameter. So that gives me on the left-hand side i of t, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to need a partial fraction decomposition, which I have written beforehand as part of my script. So that means... I have the integral of 2 by t plus 2 dt plus the integral of dt by t plus 2 squared minus the integral of 2 dt by t plus 1 plus the integral of dt by t plus 1 squared. And all these integrals are pretty easy to evaluate. For the first case, you have 2 times log t plus 2, or just the logarithm of t plus 2 squared, minus 1 by t plus 1, minus 2 times the logarithm of, no wait, minus the logarithm of t plus 1 squared, minus 1 by t plus 1, plus a constant of integration, c. So let me just combine the log terms together. So I'm going to write this as log t plus 1 by t plus 2 by t plus 1 squared. And I'm left with all of this. Okay, cool. And now to determine the constant of integration, c. And for that, recall that i of t is defined as the double integral from 0 to 1 of xy to the t times x times log x times log y divided by log xy dx dy. Again, we can make use of our region of integration. Notice that since xy lies between 0 and 1, in the limit as t approaches infinity, xy to the t terribly sorry about that, xy to the t approaches 0. And what about the limit of this logarithm function? Well, in the limit as t goes to infinity, we have log t plus, again, terribly sorry about that, log t plus 2 by t plus 1 squared. So let me just expand using the reciprocal of t, meaning that I have the limit as t approaches infinity, of log 1 plus 2 by t divided by 1 plus 1 by t squared. So these two go to 0 in the limit as t approaches infinity, and we're left with log 1, which is 0. And obviously, these two also go to 0 as t approaches infinity. So all of this implies that you have a 0 here, a 0 here, a couple zeros here, 
So we have C equal to zero. Okay, cool, that is convenient indeed. So let me just write this out. Finally, I have I of T being equal to log uh, T plus two by T plus one squared minus one by T plus one minus one by T plus two. That's what my integral function evaluates to. And we're interested in the integer values of this function. And we actually wanted to sum over the non-negative integers to get our target integral. Okay, cool. So this implies that I equals the sum over n of what exactly do we have? We have log n plus 2 by n plus 1 squared. I'm writing this 2 now as a coefficient thanks to the properties of the logarithm minus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. And let me just transform the index variable from n to n plus 1, meaning that I'm now summing from n equal to 1, 2 times log n plus 1 divided by n, which of course can be written as 1 plus 1 by n, minus 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. And it doesn't look like we have anything special here, but indeed we do. Let me show you. All I need is to play around with this term here. So what if I write this as 2 by n minus 1 by n, or because of the negative sign with it, negative 2 by n plus 1 by n. Okay, great. So what I have is 2 log 1 plus 1 by n minus 2 by n. Okay, so that's one thing. That's one grouping done. Then I have a positive sign, 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1, another grouping. Okay, great. Now to use the linearity of the summation operator, I have 2 times the sum over the positive integers n of log 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 by n plus the sum over n of 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. And this sum here is something very special. This thing here is negative Euler Mascheroni. So this implies that our result delightfully has negative 2 Euler Mascheroni plus this telescoping series. And what does it evaluate to? Let me just call it S and evaluate it very quickly. So S is actually the limit as k approaches infinity of the sum from n equals 1 to k. Looks kind of weird. Normally you see a lowercase k here and uppercase n here, but we do some pretty weird math here. So I don't think anyone should be complaining. And let me just expand the right-hand side now. So this is the limit as k tends to infinity of 1 by n, no wait, it's 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. You get the idea, right? And this is going to go all the way up to negative 1 by, no, it's positive 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1. So we see a pattern here. Cancellation, 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 and we're left with 1 minus 1 by k plus 1, and this thing goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. So that implies that s equals 1. So finally, our really cool double integral has a really cool result to match. It's 1 minus twice the euler mascheroni constant. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out the new merchandise in the shop. Thank you. See you next time.